Hey y'all, uh, about 12 minutes into this video, maybe 14, there's uh, like a five second blackout, but just hang in there, the video comes back. Boy, do I have a long video for you. Uh, it took my wife and I two full months to clear that property that I bought across the street from my house. And uh, I used a machete to do about 99% of the work including uh, cutting some trees down that were uh, six inches or less with this machete here. Uh, I'm going to get all these machetes out of their sheaths and uh, we'll go over them and I'm going to tell you some things that I've learned. I had no idea uh, that there was this much to learn about machetes and I'm going to share with you some of the things that are kind of a helpful to know. It might make you, uh, might help you if you uh, make a machete purchase, it, it might help you make the right decision of which one to buy. First, I'm, uh, I'm going to get the, uh, the junk Chinese machete out of the way. It's uh, just Chinese junk. I bought it at a hardware store. Uh, hardly Really, it's hardly worth having because of the uh, extreme flex. And that's the first thing I've learned about machete is that if you have an enormous amount of flex, when you swing this thing, the impact, the blow, gets absorbed by vibration and flex. And it really, it, it, it's just hard to use. Uh, you use all your energy up swinging this thing and then when you get to whatever you're wanting to cut it 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 the vibration and the flex absorbs it so this i would never buy this again it was a waste of time waste of money and a waste of effort using it uh this is the cold steel bolo and i'll tell you what i've learned about the style of machetes for what i was using the bolo style, and that's just this style with the with the wider end, which makes it heavier on the end. Uh, because about eighty percent of what you do with this, you're going to be using from here forward. Uh, that's about where you'll be doing most all of your cutting. But this cold steel which was about 20 bucks or so shipped to my house through Amazon. Uh, oh, and it's made in South Africa, cold steel made in South Africa, Polo. And when I got it, the edge, this was the worst of all of the machetes that I bought as far as edge. You could look down this edge and it was curved. It had obviously been put on a grinder by hand or a belt grinder by hand. And it had some areas where it went way too far over onto the other side of the blade. Uh, it took a lot of work to get this to be even close to an acceptable edge. And then when I started using it, I realized that even this cold steel has way too much flex. So uh, that's my, uh, my opinion of this cold steel bolo machete. It's just not a good machete. And it actually was uh, the second most expensive one I bought. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy this again this is uh, the marbles bolo machete now it's kind of short when you compare it to this the cold steel see the difference in length here uh, and that is something else I've learned is the length of the machete is important because when you're swinging this the longer your blade, the faster the blade tip is traveling when you're swinging it. And speed helps you get through some of the vines and brush and trees you're cutting. So this actually came in pretty good shape. It had a, uh, a decent edge, not a, not a real working edge. You have to, all of these, hold on one second. What's wrong, Breezy? What's wrong? You got to stop making noise. All these came with, uh, you know, decent edges, but you absolutely have to put 
your own working edge on and uh, I'll the end of this video I'll show you how I do that this is too short that's the only complaint I have it was easy to sharpen uh, it doesn't have an enormous amount of flex has a little bit uh, like I said it's made in El Salvador pretty good steel uh, I didn't use it a whole lot just because it's so, so short that you can't really swing it fast enough to cut through the stuff I was cutting but you know for camping or for transporting this somewhere you know a shorter one might have a, a, a better use than a longer one uh, the handle eh, it's okay it's got a really really big gap here let me go <clears throat> let me bring you in closer that really sucks there uh, it's not only does it have a gap between the wood and the blade uh, there's about an eighth inch deep groove here between the edge of the wood and the edge of the blade not you know for 12 bucks I mean you're not expecting uh, perfection but I'm just telling you what is wrong with it if I were going to use this a lot I would put this on my belt sander and sand this handle down level to the edge of the blade uh, oh and uh, you can also order a sheath with this it doesn't come with it this blade is like 14 or 15 bucks that neighborhood and then for 11 bucks you can order a sheath and uh, it's actually a pretty nice sheath so uh, that wasn't a bad purchase I would order that again if I thought I had a need for it and I was gonna go camping or something like that now this is the Tramontina uh, made in Brazil Tramontina, you know, it's kind of, it's a very popular blade. A lot of people know and use these. It has a, a high rating on Amazon. Again, it's the Bolo style, which, as I said, uh, I, I've decided that, without a doubt, the Bolo style is absolutely the best style of blade for what I was doing. And I can't think of why I would need a blade that wasn't Bolo style. Uh, it really helps power through vines and trees having this extra little bit of weight on the end. Uh, this blade, the Tramontina, again, a little bit short. It's, a, it's just as short as the uh, marbles. And uh, when you're really having to power through stuff, the extra four inches makes all the difference in the world. Not a bad blade. I could have ordered a longer blade, but it wasn't in the Bolo style, and I really, uh, really wanted the Bolo style. Tramontina makes good blades. The steel is really good. Very, very minimal amount of flex. I mean, you really got to put some pressure on this to get any flex out of it. Uh, good steel. It came with a fairly decent edge on it, and when you look down at this way, it was a nice straight beginning of a good edge. So I didn't really have to do any special sanding or grinding on it. I just put it on my sharpening stone for about 20 minutes and uh, really, uh, really sharp edge. Even after using it, it, it maintained its edge. So I would buy that again. I, I wish they made the Bolo in about four inch longer length. Uh, but the Tramontina is a pretty good blade for, especially for the price. It was like 11 or 12 bucks. Uh, I'm going to skip this one and go right to this. This is... Uh, Ozark Trails Parang, P-A-R-A-N-G, that's the style. Uh, <clears throat> the handle, it's got a really nice handle. But, and, and, and it's pretty stiff. The only, the only flex is really right here where it gets thin, where it goes into the handle. That's the only flex it has. And I didn't actually use this, my wife did, and she thought it was okay for cutting some of the smaller vines that were growing up the side of the tree. Uh, I tried it, and it's just not long enough. Uh, the stuff I was cutting, you had to really, really swing hard, and this just didn't have it. And on top of that, this was, uh, of all of them, this was the worst edge of any, and it took the, uh, I don't know what kind of steel this is, but it took forever to uh, get a decent working edge on this, and still, it's not perfect. Uh, I sort of, you know, you got to justify your time, and since I wasn't really going to, use this I uh, I didn't put a razor edge on this so uh, 
I wouldn't buy this again. It was only seven or eight bucks at Walmart, but uh, to me, it just it wasn't worth the investment. Now, this is the Gator Bolo, a uh, Gator Gerber. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's the Gerber Gator Bolo. And uh, at first, I didn't think I was going to like this handle. It's a little on the small side as far as girth, but uh, it is rubberized. And uh, I was wearing gloves, so it was okay. I, I, I do wish the handle was bigger and fatter, but not everybody has mixed the size of mine. This blade absolutely blew my mind. Uh, no flex, none. It's a much, much thicker blade than uh, any of the others. Let me show you. This is the Gerber. That's the Tramontina. Noticeably thicker and a uh, uh, better job at hardening the steel. I'll show you that handle up close too. Yeah, not a real big handle, but since it is rubberized and I was wearing gloves and it does have this hook on the end of it here, so when you grab it, your hands don't slip off real easy. Uh, that would be my only, if I could change anything, the only thing I would change would be the handle. This thing came, uh, I bought this at Walmart too, and this was actually the most expensive one I bought. It was uh, right at 30 bucks with tax out the door at Walmart. Uh, I would call this basically a, a long-handled axe because the things I cut with this, you just would not think you could cut with a machete. You know, I was out there on that land, and uh, it's a long walk from that land to my house, so I started using my lawnmower with the trailer to go back and forth, but my God, I can't drag around every tool I have here. Uh, so I ended up relying on this more than I would have if that land was, you know, closer just because I didn't want to drag around chainsaws and pole saws and pruning saws. and So I did everything with this, including cutting down trees. Uh, on Amazon, there were some complaints about the edge up here where you would use it most folding over if you make it too sharp. And I had that problem one time. And the reason was I was cutting vines along the chain link fence and I hit the chain link fence over and over and over. And I did put a nick in it but a few minutes on the sharpening stone and it sharpened it right up. Uh, I just cut a tree down with this yesterday, uh, a six inch tree, and it is still sharp enough to cut paper. It took an edge real easy. It held an edge for longer than any of the others. And I have used... I hope I didn't lose everything I recorded. Uh, I don't know what's wrong. It just cut off on me. So I'm gonna continue like, like I haven't lost any data. Uh, I can't say enough good things about this. It was well worth the money and I used it more than I ever used a machete in my life or probably ever will again. Uh, that two acres over there was the hardest work I've done in a very, very long time. And uh, this, this worked great. So, oh yeah, and that comes with a, a really nice, uh, where is it? It comes with a really nice sheath. Uh, you slide it in there. Uh, it's got Velcro to hold it in, and a zipper, nice sheath, uh, belt loop back here. Uh, here's what I wanted to talk about, I made, uh, okay, yeah, thin blades, uh, don't get them with thin blades, it's a waste of time, you use all your energy, uh, it's absorbed in the flex. Uh, handles, let me tell you, uh, after you've been swinging this for a little while, and you're sweaty, these handles get wet, it is very, very difficult to grip hard enough to hold on to them. Gloves made all the difference in the world. And I'm gonna tell you what happened. Well, it happened again. Doggone it, I hope I haven't lost all my... That's the second time. Uh, yeah, wear gloves, your hands will get slippery, and I don't care what kind of handle you have, this will slip out of your hands if you're not wearing gloves. Uh, stand clear. 
You know, when you're hacking your way through vines and cutting them, you're not really looking around. Make sure nobody comes near you. You can't watch them and where you're swinging. Uh, my wife got a little close to me a time or two, not realizing that I may change the direction of my swing at any moment. And then the next thing that happened to me was, uh, it was at the end of the day and I was just exhausted. And I swung this and it come right out of my hand and went behind me about 20 foot and stuck in the ground. Uh, I worked too long, I should have stopped and uh, rested earlier. So uh, don't let people get in the arc of your swing or anywhere near you where, especially if you're really tired. And if you're really tired, man, stop. You could cut a big gash in your leg. And that's another thing. You start getting a little reckless and unable to control your swing as the day wears on. Uh, and there is one drawback to having a machete this heavy and thick. It's harder to control if you, if you go through vines quicker than you thought you would. You know, it's harder to stop the swing of the machete than it would be, say, a lighter machete like that, you know. It's, uh, I would say this is easily twice the weight of this, so it's a lot harder to stop after you've put all kinds of momentum and speed into getting this uh, through something, and it goes through easier than you thought it would, and then you have to stop that momentum. So it's harder to do that with a heavier machete. Uh, yep, the speed of your swing, that was another thing. Uh, it's easier to get these thinner, lighter machetes up to a higher speed, which there are some vines that were thinner, that this, I just could not make my, my machete go through it, simply because it's thicker, the vines were thinner, and they would just bounce off the edge of the blade. So a thinner blade, being able to move at a faster speed, would have only worked under those conditions for me. Uh, I can't think of anything else to say. Let's see, did I cover anything? Uh, thick vines versus uh, thin vines. Yeah, the uh, thick vines, you know, there was very little problem getting through them with this, but the thin vines just bounced off the edge of this, and uh, I did use the thin blade for some of them. I used a cheap machete. I, I used all, all these machetes were used at some point, but this is the one that I did. 99% uh, of my land clearing with and uh, if I never use it again I got my money's worth out of it on that so uh, I'm gonna shut this off thanks for watching I hope to God I didn't lose all my uh, my data the camera just keeps shutting off on me I don't know why okay uh, there are different ways of sharpening these some people might use a file some people might use a, a belt sander but I use a sharpening stone and I'm just going to show you how I do it. Uh, I put a little oil on the sharpening stone and I hold the blade at about a 22 degree angle. And we go. And uh, I have a nick here that I'm going to try uh, sharpening past the nick. And uh, here's the nick right here. And here's a couple more up here. And all these nicks are my fault when I was cutting the vines up against the chainsaw, a chain link fence. So uh, anyway, I just thought I'd, uh, here's another nick down here. So I got about 20 minutes of sharpening to do. And I can sharpen past the nicks because I've already done it once. And uh there you go. Best uh, machete I've ever had, and I'm glad I bought it. Thanks for watching. This is just one of the trees I cut down with the uh, Gerber Gator Bolo. And all those trees over there have had major, really big limbs cut off of them using that machete. And I pro you know, I could have used a chainsaw. But when I was out here working, the machete is what I had in my hand, so I just used the machete instead of having to go back and forth and get my chainsaw and then put it up at night. And and uh, there are a couple of trees that I cut with a chainsaw, uh, especially back along the fence. There was uh, several trees that were just too big to cut with this, or I couldn't get the machete in close enough to uh, really swing good. But uh, this is at least 
six inches. Here, here's a size 12. <laughs> so that's at least six inches across and uh, probably took me two minutes to chop through that with a machete, the Gerber. Look at those three babies. Oh, you guys got it so rough. Look, look at Breezy. He doesn't even have a whole chair to lay in. He has to lay on an arm. I'm surprised they don't come take these dogs from us. That's that, where he wants to sit. They're, they're sharing a chair. That's just inhumane. You know, we, we should go to jail for the for mistreating these poor dogs. Animal who's suffering to give them shelter and medical care and the gentle touch of love. But we simply can't get them without you. So please join. With There's like 800, 8,700 dogs in the South. Minute Jeez. Dallas. South Dallas, yeah. When you go online or make that call, that's just one sitting. Shelter. And look how many you think the there is in Detroit. Guys, receive an ASPCA T-shirt.